As darkness falls on Gratuville, Tennessee, it is once again time for Gratu After Dark with your host, Doctor and Pastor Gratu Orloff. Here in the Gratu Orloff International Building of Trade, we are up on room in room on the floor seven and room three. And yeah, we're gonna have another exciting episode tonight. Here's Friday night, April the ninth, or maybe it's the seventh. Who knows? But anyway, with no further ado, here's Grotu Orloff. Hi, folks. It is Grotu Orloff, Doctor Orloff to some, Pastor Orloff to others. Oh shit! And uh, today, uh, lots of exciting news. The uh, uh, the king of England, well, he's not the king of England. Uh, some, the, some, the prince of something passed away. You see, uh, when you're a king and you marry a woman, they become the queen. But apparently when you're a queen and you marry a guy, they, they just keep their, they don't become the king. So that's, uh, he passed away. He was uh, two months shy of his uh, 200th birthday. And, uh, yes, um, he helped lead, uh, um, I think it was 260, wasn't he? I think he uh, was one of the, one of the soldiers in the Revolutionary War fighting against us. Prince, uh, Philip, I believe his name is. Yes, so, God saved the queen. She ain't no human being, as we all know, and, uh, today we're, uh, up here, having lots of fun with episode 345 and uh, I'm continuing to clean oh we, we finally got a hold of the owner of that movie theater that I've been telling you about so if you haven't been watching every episode of uh, Gratu um, we found uh, some friends of, I, of ours moved to Alabama and they uh, have been telling us there's a movie theater for sale with the attached building and the attached building has two businesses in it. One is vacant, and the other is being rented. So you get rental income, and then upstairs in the ad it says, ideal for a loft, 11 rooms or something, maybe more than that. Apparently there's stairs that go up, and apparently there used to be businesses up there, and little there's little offices of the corridor. But anyway, so the theater, was um, refurbished because the owner's daughter was, wanted to teach theater there. So they fixed it up. They installed restrooms. Originally, this it's a little tiny town, and it's on the town square, and the city, um, you know, court building, whatever, is always in the center of the square, right? It's right across the street. Well, apparently, when this theater first opened in the 30s or 40s, People just went across the street to the courthouse to use the restroom. They didn't have restrooms in this uh, this building, and uh, it's in Alabama, so it has a separate box office and stairs going up to the balcony because back then it was segregated, and, and uh, African Americans had to sit in the balcony, and they had a separate staircase and even a separate ticket booth. Can you believe that? Anyway, all that's intact. Uh, peer, uh, but anyway. Uh, couldn't hear back from the real estate agent and but my my friends went and took pictures of the outside the ones that moved there and were telling us about it well through various machinations i finally found uh, uh, i contacted the owner and talked with him for a good hour last night and uh, apparently the theater has all pretty much brand new seats someone put in all these new seats in a theater somewhere and then, uh, then they wound up demolishing the building. So this guy bought all the, I guess, curtains and screen and, and uh, seats from this theater. And it's, I think the theater seats about 200 people. And there's more seats that wouldn't fit in there. They're in the basement. So if any seat gets damaged, there's more. Okay, problem is we sell this house, we could probably just swing buying that 
but you know the rental income from that art gallery that's occupying one of the spaces it's a huge space and I can really use it they're only paying $150 a month but I can't toss them out because then you'd be the bad guy or the evil new person but uh, anyway uh, oh, but the real problem is that area that's ideal for a loft apartment has doesn't have a kitchen, doesn't have bathrooms, it needs heating, air con it needs to be completely reworked. I mean, I'd keep some of those offices as rooms, but I guess you'd have to create a kitchen, and there's a place where a bathroom used to be, and I don't know what that would cost, so that would all be added to the cost, or unless we could talk him down, he's already cut the cost. 50,000 but he's been trying to sell this since 2017 and this is a bad time to be selling a theater but here's uh, the deal um, I could uh, run movies I could have bands play um, they've had in the past uh, the surviving members of Hank Williams band have, have performed there and they've had a uh, Oh, and there's a dressing room where everyone that's ever played there on the stage signs their name on the wall. And, and then I said, is there anything left from the old theater, like maybe the old original marquee? And he says, no, there's a box of movie posters. Think of from the 1960s. There are no movies I've ever heard of. And I'm thinking, they're probably great. But, um, so, yeah, that's the problem. Um, so the question is, First of all, if the theater opened and uh, cool bands played there, but it's out in the middle, of, you know, it's in Alabama, it's in a little tiny town. But how many of you could go to, to uh, perform? You know, I would play monster movies. I would play, uh, I guess, you know, uh, they have Blu-ray projection. Uh, so, you know, you'd have to work it out with a movie studio. But uh, I think if you, if you just... Tell me if I'm wrong. If you just play a movie, maybe you couldn't do that. If you let people in free and wonder what you could get away with showing, but I'd probably have to stick to public domain movies or stuff, old, old stuff. Old cartoons and movie serials and unbelievable monster stuff. And, and uh, the kind of stuff that, that I enjoy would be up on that screen and the kind of music that I enjoy would be in that lobby and, and coming out of the, the, the front doors and uh, through the, all, all the speakers. It would be quite a thing. And all the movie posters and all the paraphernalia that I've correct, collected would be on display. And then I could have that empty space could be kind of a little museum. But if we have to get that area fixed up upstairs, we'd probably have to live in that empty space there while they're doing that work upstairs. And there's three bathrooms there, but they don't have a shower because it's a business. So I'd have to install a shower and then that work would have to be done. And I don't know what, what would it cost to, it has hardwood floors up there. What would it cost to put in a kitchen? Do any of you do that work? If any of you are contractors and you, you'd be willing to, to, uh, take an extended vacation and come live with us and and remodel that upstairs you know I mean and and, and get you know because maybe you're out of work and there's no work because of all this stuff going on uh, maybe one of you knows how to do that or could help us because I don't know don't know if she did about that but it's a wonderful opportunity but then you know we're kind of discouraged hearing that the upstairs is uh, not uh, not like livable space it says ideal ideal for a loft apartment it would it's apparently a 40 foot by 60 foot space it's huge then if you take some of the walls out you, you know you have like a dance hall in there or something but that was a little depressing we found out about we talked with him late last night and then we were staying up late watching the movie diner which i hadn't seen in many years I think my wife kind of liked it. Then, so I didn't get enough sleep again. So I'm ex extremely exhausted, but I got to dig through this shit because regardless of whether we move or not, I've got to get rid of this horde. Um, but, you know, you probably feel a little gypped if I don't show you some comic book related stuff first. So let's do that first. I just pull a random box out of the closet. It says Marvel, black and white. And this is not by any means the uh, full extent of my Marvel black and white stuff. 
um, by a long shot. Let's just see what's in here. Um, oh, okay, this is Marvel's uh, attempt to uh, do their own heavy metal, right? So it's Epic Illustrated, and it has ads for alcohol in the back, so you know it's adult. But they didn't go as far as heavy metal. Well, I don't know. There's there's nudity, you know. But I think they... Uh, let me see. It's... Um, I haven't opened this probably. And yeah, it's def they're definitely, you know, trying to do heavy metal. It's Marvel copied everything that people did. Let's see, what is uh, good in here? What is this? Seems like, what is this? Yeah, it's like this little fairy kind of stuff. And... Oh, oh, okay. Well, they, uh, okay, so if you're a completist, you, you know, you got to get this because it actually has a Silver Surfer story in it. So, uh, so, the Silver Surfer, and a bunch of uh, heavy metal kind of stuff. Yeah, so. so, the question, who does this? Uh, a Tale of the Silver Surfer, 1980. Okay. Um, and they've got this, uh, what, what people are thinking of the idea of them doing the magazine, so... Neil Adams, Ray Bradbury, Joseph Stefano, the um, guy that wrote the screenplay for Psycho and, you know, was the producer of The Outer Limits. Short text stories, together with illustrated ones. That sounds like a very good idea. George Powell, Ian Summers, people just saying, hey, that sounds like a good idea. I haven't seen it yet because you haven't done it yet, but that sounds like a good idea. So that's not kind of weird reviews. It sounds like it'd be a good idea to put out a comic book, yeah. Here's um, another copy from, shit, I guess I didn't buy, I thought I have a lot more, I think I have more copies of this, I'm pretty sure, this is from October of 84, so I guess this was published a while, and it has, uh, well, are there Silver Surfer stories throughout this whole run? I don't know, here's the Lost Galactus story. So if you're into uh, Marvel superheroes, you've got to, uh, you gotta pick this up, I guess. And then they have a Cerebus story. Cerebus the Aardvark. Um, all kinds of stuff. Epic Illustrated. I don't think this is valuable. I don't know. Do people collect this? I have no idea. Well, that's Epic Illustrated. What else do I have here? Well, here's a... Um, Marvel Super Special number 33, Buckaroo Banzai. This movie came out in the summer of 84, and it's uh, basically Doc Savage. They're a rock and roll band, and they're also a band of adventurers, and uh, they go up against some aliens or something. It's, uh, you know, a very a movie that people don't remember. Um, it's cool in that it just plunges you in like you're uh, reading a Doc Savage book well into the run of the Doc Savage magazine, you know, or uh, the book, the the um, paperback adaptation of Buckaroo Banzai refers to previous adventures that never happened, and I thought that was cool, but Buckaroo Banzai just kind of came out and laid there, and, and I think people, some people remember it fondly, and but uh, no sequels that I know of, or it was the, the little tiny guy that played Robocop, played Buckaroo Banzai. I know uh, he was real tiny because they had the world premiere of Robocop in Dallas, and I was there at the theater, and, and that guy came came down the aisle, and he's about about three feet tall, Robocop, Joseph Weller, where fucking Peter Weller. little bitty guy. Um, I saw King Kong also in Dallas, um, and Faye Ray was there, and she came down, it might have been, I don't think it was the same theater, 
But uh, she came down the aisle, walked right past me. She was about the same height as Peter Weller, which is tiny. Yeah, anyway, so, yeah, I'm not saying he was a bad actor. He was just a short, no offense to short people. Short people got no reason. People were, that was one of the earliest examples of, uh, you know, political correctness. Because mostly in the 70s, people didn't give a shit about political correctness. But that song came out and kind of offended people. Randy Newman. Where's well, the adaptation of Return of the Jedi? I'm kind of going backwards in the box. For no particular reason. So, uh, and it's, uh, really nice looking inside because unlike the Star Wars comic in general when the movies came out they actually sprung for some decent artists so we have let's see if he did the inks too Where are the credits? I mean, it's Al Williamson art, obviously, but did he ink as well as pencils when I'm trying to... Oh, here we go. We would like to acknowledge the contributions of the following artists without whom this book would not have been produced. Dan Green, Dave Stevens, William Stout, Tom Yeats, and Rick Bryant. Okay, so William Stout and Dave Stevens. Um... Okay, uh, they, they must have inked over Al Williamson's art. Oh well. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, this was really cool. Warriors of the Shadow Realm. They, these characters, these Lord of the Rings type characters that Mike Plug drew first appeared in, I think Marvel Premiere, or, uh, and it was called Weird World. And I think there were two or three issues, but then they determined, wow, these characters are great. We need to like give them a prestige format. Um, and this is, uh, see, this is uh, what is going on with this page? Why is this page print? Oh, there's a there's a fold out. Not a. Okay. It's like a fold out. You know, it's not like a Playboy centerfold. It's a like a hobbit looking centerfold. Yeah, a Marvel Weird World super special in the fantasy tradition of Tolkien. Bonus poster. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, Mike Plug art that's been uh, airbrushed and. And this is the map of their world. The spring, June, 1979. But... Oh, I'm completely wrong. It's not Mike Plug. It's John Bashema's art. I could have sworn, didn't Plug do the comic, uh, Marvel Premiere? I don't know, conceived and written by Doug Moench. Mench, I've never pronounced the name in my life, M-O-E-N-C-H. No, design and drawn, rendered by Ruby Nebris, painted by Peter Ledger. Okay, I, I don't, yeah. Okay, so I'm wrong. It wasn't Mike Blue. Oh, you know, it's uh, it's cool, you know. It's uh, this is when uh, you know, people thought that the uh, 
John Bashy, Lord of the Rings, was going to be big. It wasn't. And so, uh, attempt is to get, uh, to do a, uh, to do a Marvel Lord of the Rings, basically. Because, you know, Marvel, I think Captain Strange Life calls it the house of no new ideas. <sighs> a Marvel Super Special. This is where they did uh, Conan in color. And, uh, yeah. Back when they were trying to sell, the, you know, the Kiss comic and Jaws 2. I remember when the Kiss comic magazine came out, it was a big deal in the news because Kiss went to the printing plant in Detroit or somewhere, and they both they all took little vials of their blood and they uh, poured it into the uh, red ink. So, in theory, uh, you were getting little trace amounts of possibly of Kiss's own blood in the comic book, and they made a big deal out of that. And then here's the adaptation of Jaws 2, which was a terrible movie. This is a very slick-feeling magazine. Um, so anyway, it's very, uh, very thin, much like the movie. Yeah, Jaws 2 was a cash grab. We're working our way backwards in time here. Oh, here's when they had ad adapted Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Which is a really good movie. Fighting to stay alive on New Earth. Mambo, endowed with special side powers. It looks like this is hard shaken art, probably. Battles into his future to fight the invading Cesarius. No, Walt Simonson. Judge, jury, and Klaus Jensen. Oh, and it's colored by Marie Severin, so. Communication terminated. The same coloring as an EC comic, because as you might know, Marie Severin color was the colorist for EC. And here's uh, another. We're going back further in time. Marvel Comics Super Special Savage Sword of Conan, but it's a color uh, issue, you know, color. Uh, Oh, it's got a wraparound cover. Look at that. Really cool. Here in the sea, billions of years ago, like the analog of sea, that will reach across space and time. So I don't know. What do you think? Would it probably cost about fifty, sixty thousand to do that? Uh, turn that into a living space to build a kitchen and a bath bathroom with a shower. You know, tub. Um, if you have, uh, I've looked up videos on YouTube where people are converting, you know, old buildings into living spaces. Um, I mean, I guess we bought the house out, the theater and the building attached outright then maybe we could get a home equity loan or a loan to redo the upstairs. This is Masters of Terror. Robert E. Howard, Robert Block, H.P. Lovecraft, August Derleth. So this is an adaptation of a Robert Block story. So they're uh, adapting these stories, which uh, I think these were I think this adaptation of it by Theodore Sturgeon I think weren't these all reprinted from supernatural thrillers I think so terrible old man by HP Lovecraft I 
Art by Barry Smith. Uh, maybe not. Maybe. I'm probably wrong. I'm probably wrong. I don't think these are reprints. Oh, okay. This is cool. I opened this box. Um, I think. Hold on. Oh, man, it doesn't. I don't have that in here. I was hoping the black and white Hulk comics would be in this particular box, but they aren't. Here's the Marvel adaptation of uh, The Land That Time Forgot. I always love that cover. And that's the actual movie poster art. We put the fun back in your miserable, ruthless lives here on WFUN Radio Pro 2. Um... You know, the movie didn't look this good. Uh, I mean, their heart was in the right place, you know, doing adaptations of Edgar Rice Burroughs stories. And that was kind of a cool effect, the glider pterodactyl. But um, when this book has some damage uh, up at the corner, but I remember it had that when I bought it in uh, 1974, 75. I remember not liking that, but it was the only copy on the stands. I had this distant memory of that nightmare. Sometimes you have to make that concession. Here's Marvel Preview with the Punisher. Marvel Preview number two. Gray Morrow cover. Oh, then this one. I remember this being really good. Marvel preview number five with Sherlock Holmes. Isn't that a great cover? DC had just tried to do a Sherlock Holmes uh, comic themselves um, not long before that, around 1974. This is, um, I assume that, uh, well, who did the cover? Covers, covers by Ken Barr. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes, I, I guess, in the 70s, when these came out, must have been already in public domain. So anyone could do it. Here's Marvel Preview number 9, presents Man God. Which is a adaptation of the novel Gladiator by Philip Wiley, which is... A, Apparently one of the inspirations for Superman, along with John Carter, is, you know, John Carter could, could leap great distances. Originally, Superman didn't fly. In the first few issues of Superman, he just, uh, you know, leaped tall buildings in a single bound. This, I remember being really, I, I knew I had to get this magazine. I, I remember the summer of, uh, was it, was it 78 probably? Yeah, the summer of 78, this was on the stands at the bookstore, and I had to get it. I didn't know why. I didn't even really know this character. Um, but maybe it's there was something that told me buy that, and I don't know. Does it have value now because um, of Guardians of the Galaxy? I don't know. Something told me I needed to get that. Here's uh, number 15 with Star-Lord. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys the black and white uh, Hulk magazine. And it was set in the early 60s at the time when he first joined the Avengers, as I recall. Here's an, up, here's an issue of Bizarre Adventures with a Cull story. And, um, I don't know if I did this artwork. This is cool looking. Really cool looking. Uh, 
call is not appreciated like it should be. John Bolton. Yeah, John Bolton, wasn't he a British artist out of 2000 AD? I think. If he wasn't, he should have been. John Bolton just sounds like a very British name to me. Well, that Hulk magazine was called the Rampaging Hulk, right? I think, pretty sure. And it was black and white, but this is when they switched over to color because the TV show was on the air and they thought, well, let's just, they started doing color magazines. And so I don't know, Man Bear Pig, I know you've got like an almost complete collection of, uh, or maybe complete now of the Incredible Hulk, but um, I don't know if you were saying you hadn't gotten these magazines yet, but I think that's probably the next step if you haven't already. Yeah, so it's uh, definitely... Yeah, this is a cool, uh, cool magazine. This that's issue number ten. The one through nine were black and white, and I've got most of them, and they're not in this box. Don't ask me why. And there's a cool Bob Larkin cover. Oh, it's a wraparound. Cool. Yeah, it's just, you know, a Hulk comic inside. Just a way to make a few more extra dollars off of the Hulk, who was really hot at the time. And but and by issue uh, 13, they weren't doing the wraparound cover anymore. Boy, isn't that a great painting? It looks... It's Nor Earl Norum. You know why that's great? Because he's the guy that did all those men's magazines, a lot of those men's magazine, uh, men's adventure, rugged man, kind of, you know, I killed a bear with a toothpick kind of covers. And, and so he also worked for Marvel, and so it looks just like one of those true men. Male Swat magazine. And, uh, so yeah, the, uh, the Hulk, a Marvel super color magazine. Yeah, they were, they were really into the color stuff there for a little bit. Here's some of the Howard the Duck uh, magazines. This is the one, you can only get one, get this issue where it's, they go back to his home world. It's, um, should they even do the Kent State Massacre? Okay, that's Howard the Duck number six. I got I got them all here. I don't know if you want to see them all or what. Uh, hold on. Some of them are. This one's got a really good man thing cover. I'm way too close to that light. Here's a Batman type cover. And what else do I have in here? I've got some Savage Sword of Conans. And then I've got all my Planet of the Apes in here. Now, Savage, you, you know what these look like. I don't think these are that valuable either, are they? Some of these I've got multiple copies because I didn't realize I'd bought them already. Yeah, I've got two copies of that one. This is a this is a cool cover. You know. They did a variation of that scene on the cover uh, in the Conan Schwarzenegger movie. But that's so great. Boris Vallejo. Ah. 
Yeah, I got tons of them, but they're very, um, they're very common. You know, you see them everywhere you go, so I don't know if you really want to see them. This is what very, I was so happy to get this off the newsstand. This is my childhood copy. Well, most of these are. This is a first issue of Planet of the Apes. It adapted, you know, the first chapter of the first Planet of the Apes. They adapted the movies. Then they had articles. And then uh, they had new adventures on the Planet of the Apes done by uh, Mike Plug, and that was cool. Okay, well, there's more Planet of the Apes, more Conans. You want to see them? I'll be glad to show them to you sometime. But I need to get back to this horde because that's, I got I got to do it. Plus, the trash men are coming here. Uh, they may already have come, but if they haven't, I could get this stuff out in today's trash. Even though I call this Gratu after dark, I'm actually filming it. It's probably about 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday, April 7th, 1964. Okay, more stuff from work, which goes right in the right in the trash trash <laughs> but seriously if you guys know uh, anything about um, about uh, rebuilding, uh, bu building, building back better. I want to build that building back better. I think there are tax credits in that area of Alabama for fixing things up. And it's a historic building, you know, it's on the town square. These are statistics for my uh, grandfather. To, um, you know, from the baseball encyclopedia. Philip Lefty Weiner, if you're into baseball, you can look him up. Okay. Here's some pages from a little magazine I did for the sixth graders. I would reprint, reprint all this artwork. But these are just extra copies, so I'll get that in the trash. Greek and Roman mythology in the classroom. There's a picture of the cast of the time tunnel. Let's just copy this out of some magazine because it's a jungle girl, but I don't need that. Hollywood's leading rock and roll choreographer. I'm gonna save that. Stuff I'm saving, I'm putting over, over, over yonder. This is from Zenite.org, which was a website about Edgar Rice Burroughs, and I printed this December 17th, 1999. I'm sure that web page is no longer around, so I'll save that. It's so hard to throw anything away when you're an insane hoarder. America's Greatest Comics Characters. I probably copied this out of Alter Ego Mag. I'll save it. What else do I have here? 
Oh, this is drawn by one of my students. The, I showed you her artwork in a previous episode. She's, she was really good. I mean, this was done freehand. This was not copied from anything. And to me, that's as good as a lot of this these anime-style, manga-style characters that I see done by professionals. And she was, you know, in seventh grade. So Hopefully, she can uh, do something with that as a living. That's a cool bulldog head from the 40s. It's so good to throw this stuff away. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this football illustration. That's hilarious. See, you know that drawing I showed you a minute ago? This is what her contemporaries were drawing. Stuff like that. Or that. How about that hairstyle on that goalie there? Or this picture of a volleyball. <laughs> yes, it's Friday once again, so I'm going to have to blow up the air mattress for my pal that comes on Friday nights. Oh, another drawing by that same amazing artist. So I save that. Oh, they have a standardized, all every state has a standardized test. George Bush put that into, uh, you know, before Texas and California, they had tests the kids had to take at the end of the year to show that they had learned, right? Well, George Bush put it into, uh, I don't know, executive action or something that every state had to do, uh, have some kind of test to prove that, you know, there's teaching going on, kids are learning. So uh, they, uh, they took this woman's poem, put it on the test, then asked questions about it, and this lady wrote, I can't answer these Texas standardized test questions about my own poems. It's like, uh, when I realized I couldn't answer the questions, posed about two of my own poems on the Texas, where's the second page? I'm missing some lines. I checked to see if anyone was looking. The questions began to swim on the page. Waves of insecurity, my brain in full spin. Yeah, it says, let me begin by confessing that a real case is my most neurotic poem. I have a pile of them, to be sure, but this one is the sour cherry on top. It says, test makers, test makers are for-profit organizations. My poems are a whole lot cheaper than Mary Oliver's or Jane Kenyon's, so there's that. Anyway, they chose her poem. And it says, I apologize to those kids. I apologize to the teachers. Boy, howdy, I apologize to the entire state of Texas. And no, no, the 90, anyway. Anyway, what was the question? Dividing the poem, this is the question, and she couldn't answer it, like they're saying, this is why the poet did this, but it's not. Dividing the poem into two stanzas allows the poet to, and question A is, when I printed it, didn't she? Ask questions to keep the reader guessing about what will happen. Contrast the speaker's feelings about weekends and Mondays. Incorporate reminders for the reader about where the action takes place. 
Apparently the answer is to contrast the speaker's feelings about the weekends and Mondays. Anyway, so. This is her poem. That's all that really matters nowadays is these tests. Oh, look at all these lesson plans. Lesson plans written about how I'm going to... <laughs> all going in the trash. Boy, I'd like to run a movie theater. It would be such a great thing. It's such a great little town. I, if I could just fix that upstairs area. My wife has always dreamed to live in a Victorian house, but maybe if we could buy one later. If, if we make a go of this. And with those two, that empty space, we could put, if that art gallery wasn't there, we could have an, maybe just in that one empty space, we could have an amazing uh, comic book convention there. Uh, for one thing, uh, there's a lot, there's some other spaces that are uh, not filled on that town square. Maybe some of them could be rented for a weekend and then uh, the, the comic convention could be all around the town square oh I'm recording downstairs and I need to get down there real quick and make sure the recording doesn't stop because as I told you the um, YouTube stops um, stops uh, YouTube stops uh, and says, are you still watching this? Because they want to make sure their advertisers are actually seeing, you know, people watching are actually seeing the advertisers. If, if people are just letting it go and spring, then uh, spring time. Yeah, so uh, anyway, I'm recording some, some organ music downstairs. So let's go down there. I'll take this new trash down. Because <clears throat> uh, if I just fiddle with the Roku remote, then it will record for another hour and five minutes without interruption. Shit. Oh, damn it. I wonder how long it was paused because I uh I've only been working 48 minutes on this episode and I and I fiddled with it right before I went upstairs to let me see. So I stopped the recording. My hair looks terrible. Um, yeah, I just jump out of the shower and start these episodes uh, lately. See, it says um, video paused. See that? Continue watching. And uh, hold on. So, and you have to press yes. But first, let me see. How much I uh, I'll play back what I've recorded so far on the DVD-R and see how much uh, how long it was playing uh, recording nothing. Every time I press the fast forward button, it goes forward 10 minutes. 
And this is a playlist with uh, almost 3,000 songs on YouTube I'm trying to record from. I'm already up to disc seven, and each disc records a little over six hours. So I've already recorded for, what is, it, what is that, 42 hours of this stuff? Uh, let's see, how far am I in? Okay, well, so let me rewind a little bit, see how many minutes of this silence I have. Um, okay, well, it looks like at the 3 hour 17 minute mark, up roughly to about the 3 hour 22 minute mark, so I have about five minutes of silence. Okay, so I'll press I'll press a button on the Roku. Thanks for confirming. Okay, so I'll be rewind this to the beginning of the video. I'll press record, then press play on the Roku. And now I'm recording Buddy Coles. The moon was yellow. Let me try to get some of this trash out before the trash men come. Unfortunately, not the trash men that recorded Surfing Bird, but the real trash men. Hold on. Uh, hold on, let me put you in my pocket for a second. Now you know what it's like to be a baby kangaroo. I'll put you in my pocket. Okay, so I have a new bag of trash. Not amazing. So let's go put it out here where the amazing and talented trash men can pick it up. I always have more trash than anyone in the neighborhood. See, these trash bags are half full. I gotta uh, get more paper from upstairs and, and fill them before the trashy humans come. Another thing I could do in that theater is do spook shows, man. I could recreate spook shows. I just have to find someone that's a magician, get some monster masks. Wouldn't that be great? Would you guys like to help with something like that? Maybe we can all fucking retire and move, move to this little town and... Uh, Paradise, but we'll, uh, we'll have to see. Well, thank you for accompanying me on that um, trash run. Let's let's gather more trash, shall we? Oh, 
Okay. Someone, someone's drawing Raven here. But that's right. That's traced. See, it's no good. See, this drawing of bad girls just traced. So that has no charm to me. Yeah, I don't like traced art. See, they just traced Wonder Woman. Say something nice about Pink Panther. Again, traced goes in the trash. I guess those are drawings of Paddington Bear. Is that who that is? See, so I saved this just because it's just some worksheet, work page, but uh, it's another drawing by that artist that I think is so good. So I'll just keep a file so when she becomes famous, I'll have a whole file of her artwork. <laughs> My name is Spring. But look at her. under her eyes. She looks as tired as I am. The goddess of spring is on meth. I'm gonna say that because it's funny. Someone's writing about superheroes. If you all know superheroes, who doesn't? Will you, Gust, will you just get right into it? You now, you now, the movie Fantastic Four, will it was the ugliest movie put when they did Avengers, they put Fantastic Four and Avengers together, and now that movie, everyone loves it, and I do. It's really cool and amazing, and some people say it's ugly. But that is their opinion. They think that, but I don't. That's some good writing. I've seen people on the uh, internet that write about that wall. Stan Lee. He made awesome superheroes. He made Iron Man, Iron Men, Superman, and other. Thank you, Stan Lee, for make us superheroes. They're so fun and make us entertain. And you too, Jack, because you draw them like cartoon. And I love superheroes and my teachers too. I'll save that. Someone write about Stan Lee. It's kind of charming. Stan Lee probably would take credit for Superman if he could. I mean, I guess he did create a like a, an amalgamation, like marbleized version of Superman, didn't he? And some stupid thing. <sighs> well. Oh, we're getting lots of trash today. They're writing about the Colombian American actress stars in Descendants as the daughter of the evil queen and the best friends to the daughter of Maleficent, played by Dave Cameron. In real life, Sophia is the total opposite of a villain. She's sweet, stylish, and super smart. She spent her years. This we can tell it's copied word for word off the internet. That's no good. They don't think we can tell. 
and they just copy word for word. But I used to do that when I was in school. I had to do a report on a mongoose. I just copied it word for word out of the World Book Encyclopedia before the internet existed. And I'd always get an A+. Plus. And I was like, so that encouraged me. That Okay, I have to do a report? Okay, I have to copy the World Book Encyclopedia on a piece of paper. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> That's... Public education system for you. I just wonder what's going on now. I see the schools letting out. I wonder how the kids are doing, and then the kids that aren't back in school, either because their schools aren't open or their parents won't let them go back to school yet. Uh, that's. Uh, horrible. Anyway, let someone write about Roblox. I think that's real popular. Yeah. <clears throat> what is this receipt? AutoZone. I don't need that. I'm going through all these writing things because someone's writing about what a great teacher Mr. Weinert is. I kind of want to save it, you know, because I don't want to throw it away. This is from January 12, 2017. So Justice League, is it a good movie or bad? My opinion, good, but compares, but compare it with the comic books. Like Flash, he acts different in the show. He has less squeaky voice and is more familiar with stuff, like saving people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the way that that, that weird, Crispin Glover style actor plays the Flash, whatever his name is, um, in the Justice League movie, um, is nothing like uh, Barry Allen in the comics. He's like got a blonde crew cut, at least the variation I remember from the 60s. I love it. Makes you sound super smart. I am smart. I know. Okay. Okay. All right, what do we got here? Please sign to verify this is everything you've ever said. Oh, this is the Loki trailer. I guess, does that start in June? I don't remember. This is kind of good. Someone started a face. Spooky looking eyes. I'll save that. I saved the good artwork. I want you to help us fix it. Someone wrote about Sophia the robot. Sophia is a social humanoid robot developed by Hong Kong based company Hansen Robotics. Sophia was activated April 19th, 2015, and made her first public appearance at South by Southwest Festival in mid March 2016 in Austin, Texas, United States. She was able to display more than 67 facial expressions. Um, that guy David Hansen is an old friend of mine uh, that uh, I guess I met him when he was in college along with his best friend that uh, who contacted me because of the magazine The Sophisticate and they lived in Dallas and they started hanging around with our social circle so David Hansen was just this really eccentric guy and uh, he went off and worked for Disney for a while and then uh, doing the robotics you know with like you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean kind of robotics. And then he formed his own company and he he made a robot of uh, Philip K. Dick. 
looked just like Philip K. Dick, and then they programmed in all these things that uh, things that Philip K. Dick had written and had someone that sounded like Philip K. Dick do the voice, and then they tried to put artificial intelligence into the thing, so if you tried to talk to this Philip K. Dick robot, Android, it would kind of respond and give you answers to your questions, but based on Philip K. Dick's published thoughts and, and writings. So that was, uh, so he did that, and I, I think that robot got lost or something, or he left it on an airplane or something, I don't know. So anyway, that one's gone, but he's, now he's got this Sophia the Robot thing, and, you know, you might see her online, it's like, it's got a, it's this woman's face, and then at the top of the dome of the skull is, is clear, and you can see all the computer gizmos in it, and it connects to uh, the internet, and it's able to respond. I think Saudi Arabia made it an honorary system. Shit. Uh, so anyway, I, uh, I could... So anyway, yeah, I know that guy. But I'm not really optimistic about the artificial intelligence. I don't think it's a good idea. And uh, I don't support it. And uh, I'm not a big fan. So that, that little girl robot's real cute and funny and interesting, but ultimately artificial intelligence is not going to be a good thing for mankind. Billy Muir's supersonic guitar is playing there. Uh, in a previous episode, I was trying to remember who it was, and I said, well, it's somebody's supersonic guitars, because a lot of times when I do these episodes, I have these brain farts, and I forget names, you know, and like a few episodes back, I, I couldn't think of Tim Burton's name. I'm like, that's insane. You forget Tim Burton's name. to uh, perform at that theater you can let me know what is this this is my grandfather's uh, he went to a urology clinic in uh, on November 15th 1974 I'm not sure why I have this, but okay. Now this is a interesting artwork here, so I'm gonna save this for sure. This is insane. Gifted students can produce some amazing stuff. I 
I copied this in the, in the 1970s. You can see how brown it's turning. I copied this at the public library out of some uh, book on comics. It's some painting, probably one of those artists from the 60s that made money off of uh, um, comic artists by repainting their stuff, you know. Charlie's Plumbing Service. August 30th, 1991. I don't think I need that. <laughs> Here's this girl writing a review of Tarzan of the Apes, written in 1914. Tarzan of the Apes is well written. I think that it's interesting, brilliant, and also exciting. This is written May 10th, 20, uh, 2000. The novel, compared to others, is different, but sounds kind of the same in the ways the words are spoken. Okay, so I made them. I read, read, we read Tarzan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As we'd read A Princess of Mars, and I said, well, let's read Tarzan. And that was written by a sixth grader. So, uh, you know, the, I mean, look at this. This is pretty good for a sixth grader. Here is a Village of Horror Classics. I guess it's a, a mixture of Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. One of those little, uh, those little collector sets that you pay $39.95 for about eight months and then you have paid it off, you know, one of those. I don't know why, I guess I saved that card. I must have thought it was cool. This is a magazine I was putting together probably about uh, uh, in the probably about late nineties and never finished it. Yeah, there was an ad that I copied out of a local paper. Oh, there's a picture of me. Cool. This is Dr. Gratu Orloff, spinning some of our favorite records for you here on Radio Gratu, 106.9 FM, 24 hours a day. Cut. When Captain America throws his mighty shield, Oof. all those who chose to oppose his shield must be. This is a copy of the art that Joe Riley did for um, the Sophisticate. Nineteen ninety-five. I have the original art in in the drawer over there. It's a copy. This is one of my uh, favorite students of all time. Um, she's now like a self-help guru. She wrote for the class magazine uh, like an eight-page article on Archie comics and uh, and then one about Sailor Moon. She's really into Sailor Moon and, uh, and Archie. She's uh, her favorite TV shows are The Simpsons, Frasier, and Japanese cartoons. May 25th, 1999. My favorite cartoon characters are Archie and his friends, Garfield, Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and the others, Sailor Moon, Candy Candy, Ranma One Half, my favorite bands are the Beatles and Spanish bands. I like pop music. Birds and she likes the Beatles, Beach Boys, Sleepless in Seattle, Mulan. Um, 
This was like an interest survey they did. Oh, I'm gonna put that in the stuff to save. Yeah, I remember in 1999, Pokemon was a new thing to the United States. The first time anyone heard of Pokemon, it was because the Japanese kids were having seizures. They would, uh, because Japanese houses are smaller than ours in, in general. And kids are right up against the TV, and they do these transformations where they're flashing strobe lights. And uh, kids would have seizures, and then, then the cartoon came to the United States, dubbed into English. And uh, kids flipped out over it, especially sixth, seventh grader, sixth graders, seventh graders that I was teaching. And there was a computer lab that was brand new. And uh, they had a whole room filled with iMac computers that were these kind of blue, see-through computers. And they look cool. They're probably collector's items now. But the whole room was filled with them. And they looked really cool at the time, but they were very low-powered by today's standards. But, uh... uh <laughs> The kids would just press print, and, and it, it, it would just nonstop Pokemons would appear out of the printer. The kids, uh, I started calling it the Pokemon Lab because kids would just print pictures of different Pokemon characters, and, and it was just, they were obsessed. That was, uh, yeah, Pokemon, oh, and, and World Wrestling uh, Federation. They would print their favorite wrestlers. But... Um, yeah, well, I just heard, you know, the Prince Philip uh, that passed away, um, he, uh, he started the WWF, World uh, Wildlife Fund, uh, and, uh, and I remember the kids would type in WWF, and they would get a picture of a panda, and, you know, save the animals, save the whales, and they were like, what is this? Because there were there was the World Wildlife Fund and then there was the World Wrestling Federation and they were confused, you know. So uh, World Wrestling Federation changed their name to WWE World Wrestling Entertainment or whatever, and and I they and now I realize that you know the basically the you know the Prince of England had formed it, so he had some maybe clout enough to cause them to change their name. This is that that artist that I'm real. Uh, yeah, let me show you what I mean. This artwork is just good, in my in my humble opinion. This is neat. So I would print it, print pages after page of this art in the school magazine. So when she's famous, I will be the person that first published her. This is a great Santa Claus picture. I saved this clip art because you never know when I can use it. Oh, here's that artwork, uh, bigger size. Oh, this is the original artwork here. 
Yeah, this is the <sighs> I mean, she just crank it out piece after piece. Really good stuff. I don't know, those of you that are into anime, if anyone that's into anime watches this channel, I mean, I kind of doubt it. But if you are, uh, is that pretty good, or am I insane? I mean, that's pretty good. So you can just imagine as, you know, that girl's now in high school, or probably about to finish high school. I think she could easily turn pro. I always told him, you know, now that you, when you go into high school and you fill out applications for whatever, you can say, I'm a published writer, I'm a published artist, because you got your stuff published in our class magazine. And you're not lying. Her whole family, her older brother, who's probably well, well into maybe his late 20s now, was a genius. The whole family was amazing. Uh, um, I'll tell you, some parents really know how to um, create wonderful kids. Just it's how you bring them up, I guess. Ge maybe it's genetic. I don't know. Okay. It's an auto zone printed out. Why my my engine light is on? <sighs> anyway, I really appreciate all of you guys and all the things you guys have written down below the videos it uh, it's really just exciting to put things up on YouTube and it, it really is like uh, Mr. Quintron on the, on the was saying that it's that YouTube is like the new public access and, and it's just neat to to see people uh, put up stuff on the internet and uh, I just, I don't like all the censorship and, and uh, craziness that on uh, a lot of these, a lot of the tech giants seem to, uh, to be uh, inflicting on us. And uh, again, I don't know what, where the, what's going to happen with our... Uh, world oh yeah at the end of the school year the last day of school you've got to turn in a list of uh, all the students and, and who, what parents you've contacted if students were misbehaving or if they weren't doing well in their grades you got to show uh, that you made an effort you know and then, so, 
That was a list of parent contacts. And I put down the day and time and all that. This is from uh, uh, for our wedding. I, I built a a, a big giant moon. You know that like in the old pictures from a hundred years ago, you or, or before, you'd go to a carnival or a state fair, and there'd be a big cutout of a moon we call it a paper moon, right? And you you could pose sitting on the moon with your friends or your girlfriend or wife, whatever. And so I created a, a life size one, and then I uh, had her pictures taken on it and this is my wife and I on this moon but my wife's wedding dress had been botched by uh, a friend of ours at the time and she had tried to she had her mother-in-law alter it and it was messed up and my wife was very she doesn't like that picture so Terrible stuff. Horrible. I'm so glad that this. It's too much paperwork. And it just accumulates and I just toss it into a box and then it's time that I must purge it. I hope we can swing that damn. Uh, I keep obsessing on this movie theater thing. And, um, but man, if you're not happy where you're living, if it's like some grind, and I don't know what the job situation is in this little town in uh, Alabama, but but if you want to uh, move there and uh, help us refurbish the place, and then just hang out in the movie theater all the time watching movies and you know um, just anything you want to watch you, you know just throw it up there in the projection booth get down there and watch it just, uh, just it would be cool so this is my uh, you know I'm not saying do do the work free for us but 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 maybe at a discount just help us out man They, uh, the local school district rents out the building apparently uh, and they bring a blu-ray or whatever and then for about every about four times a year the guy said and uh, and that they bring in students as a reward for behavior or good grades or doing well on a test they bring them in and they get to watch a movie in the theater and there's not another movie theater in 40 miles so that's apparently from there so the other thing, moving there, we'd we'd have to, you know, if you're you need your your all your comic book fix every Wednesday, we we would have to uh, commute on maybe every Saturday. We just get in a car and go uh, to some, I don't know what the nearest big town is, Talladega, maybe Birmingham, and pick up the comic books that you uh, love or um, whatever it is. I don't know. Um, or mail order stuff. Um, what's another thing? Uh, oh, this is pretty good. Except it's on lined paper, and that's always a problem. See, this this is another girl. She would do this art, really good artwork on on notebook paper, but and then it would be in pencil. And that's even better, you can't get a good copy of it.
Oh, here's the really good uh, artist again. Yeah. Oh, I'm behind on that. Uh... Oh, this is when they first announced that Superman was going to be on television. And I printed these pictures because I, I thought, well, this guy kind of looks more like Superman. And uh, this is for the Supergirl show. Now he has his own series, but I'm, I'm behind several weeks on that. Uh... Oof. So, um... I need to go down and uh, fiddle with the um, Roku remote again, so I'm not recording silence. I think it's, it's real cheap to live there. Uh, Maybe you're far enough. I don't know. I just, uh, I won't complete that thought. <laughs> Yeah, see, I do the same thing. When I go to these meetings, I would always draw a gorilla head. Like, every time, I would draw a gorilla head. I just... It was a tradition. But it would look like I was taking notes, you know, and I'd look up and, you know, it's like, I'm drawing a gorilla. And then the, you know, then the... the person that's talking starts walking around I'm like oh shit they're gonna think I'm drawing them which I'm not I'm just drawing what's in my head which is gorillas I'm always in my head <laughs> there's that artist again oh I like this this artist very um look at this picture of Batman that would be a good variant cover right for the latest issue of detective comics if they still publish that, do they still publish? Didn't DC like uh, probably, uh, like shrink down all their titles recently to hardly anything? It seems like I heard about that. All right, let's uh, let us take a small bunch of new trash. Let's head on down to uh, uh, let's head on downstairs again. Let's disconnect you from your electrical umbilical cord.
you doing? Hmm. I smell something. I don't see anything on the pad. Now we're out of trash bags. Well, I need to go buy some trash bags. The trash men have already come, unfortunately, so. Um, started too late this morning. Let's see what else is in this little. Okay, so I've emptied out a whole milk crate. Ooh, this, uh, this looks like this has been wet. So I'm suspecting this has been, the cat is pissed on this. Okay. 
Well, federal income taxes, federal income tax forms for 1963. Well, I was born in 65, so this is not mine, but, oh, December 16th, 1963, my, uh, I guess my father donated a, uh, an old mattress box springs to the Salvation Army, so he wrote that off his taxes. Look at all this. He uh, kept his receipts for plumbing. San Antonio, Texas, Teal Plumbing Company. I wonder, 221 Casablanca off the... 1600 block of Broadway. I need to look that up and see if that, is that business still there. They probably think this old uh, business receipt is cool. Yeah, he kept all his uh, receipts in here. This is a couple of years, this is uh, a few years before I was born. Yeah, I saved this stuff. Call me crazy. this point 107 Sabian Drive S-A-B-Y-A-N Drive San Antonio I need to look up see where my dad and mom were living at that point point. and this is from um, he must have donated some money to uh, $10, which is a lot of money then, to the Mary Knoll Fathers, Mary Knoll, New York, December 10th, 1962. Dear Captain Weinert, we sincerely appreciate your Christmas gift of $10. Your generosity and love and vis are visible proof to our mission people that Christians live what our Savior came into the world to teach. Christmas is a word spoken to men who have been transformed, anointed, and redeemed by a child. The great God and Savior was born as a lowly member of the human race in the lovable weakness of babyhood, the supreme pledge of God's goodwill to men. This is the season of all our hope and joy. May the Christ child continue to shower his blessings upon you and your loved ones throughout the coming year. You and your intentions are a special place in our masses and prayers, Captain Weiner. Sincerely yours in Christ, George Haggerty, M.M. Cool. Well, I'll save my dad's 1963 yeah, we're tax returns. We're still waiting on our tax money to come back. We're supposed to get almost $500, and it's taking forever. And uh, we could really use that money now. I mean, uh, damn. This is, uh, I showed you these pictures before in some old episode, but this is a black and white copy. This is my, uh, 
This is Mrs. Sepko when I was in third grade, 1973 to 74. This is when I started getting into the Marvel superheroes. There I am in the back row with the weird hair there. See there. I must have made copies of these because I wanted to show uh, my students what I looked like when I was a little kid. This is my teacher, Mrs. Rice, at the American School in Germany in Heidelberg. This is 1971. That's Mrs. Rice. And I was always in the back row in these class pictures. I'm there because I was tall at that time, taller at that time than other people. I'm, I wound up. It's about six foot, but I slouch a lot, so. What else we got? Oh, here's one from uh, first grade. There I am, kind of sticking out from behind. Oh, I must have had access to a color printer. And I was having fun. Join the GEO school activities. GEO, if these cracks aren't fixed, the stock market won't be the only thing that crashed. This is from some old yearbook from the 1930s during the Depression. And I like this old student art, and I was going to reuse that in our school magazine because, because I like old stuff. But it never happened. Ooh, this is from high school. This is some folder from high school. Look at this shit I would draw. Yeah, see, that back then, arcades were everywhere, so I have a video game called Space Butcher. I got Spider-Man with an arrow in his chest. There's Pac-Man. Yeah, I was out of my mind. That was a comic book character I used to draw called Major Mutilate. I was like, kind of like an Outer Limits monster. Oh, this is my American History <laughs> Period 3 folder. I guess this is my idea of American History, huh? Wow. Strange. Death to all commies, he's saying. And then this alien sings Squatrant. And fear not. Oh, on the back cover. Yeah, you know, I would draw all that insane stuff, but you know, I'd get 100 on the test. 90. I wonder if this was, um, oh, you know, was this 100? This was this. I think this was, uh, yeah, oh, Mrs. Parr. Well, Mrs. Parr was this little old lady. This is 1982, 83, and she was teaching American history, and she had, uh, she had gone to high school in the 1920s, and in the 30s, her, her, her family was not affected by the Depression They at all. She was driving around in a nice car, but she was a little lady. I remember football players would come and just call, you lady, you know, they just like, real disrespectful. Talk to boy. And I guess we'd have to copy definitions. I got a little carried away down there at the bottom. Oh, and that's when that movie called The Beast Within came out, but I never got to see it, but I, uh, at least not in the theater. Um, 
Look at this barbarian guy with an axe and saying, good day, sunshine. And I was, uh, see Porky's. That was up when that movie was in theaters. And I've got Space Invaders drawn there. Here's a video game called uh, Nostril Explorer. No one's ever done that. Look at that. I imagine what the cabinet for the arcade game would look like. The art, what the screen would look like. Of course, I'm going to save this. Oh, look at this. For my uh, commercial art class, I drew a National Lampoon cover. Wow, that's cool. I should frame that little thing. Pretty cool. Well, you find the darndest things when you're digging through a hoard. The reader's choices for the worst DVDs out there, August 18th, 2000. People complaining about movies that don't have widescreen. I guess I don't need to save that. It's from uh, September 5th, 2000. Oh, this is about my uh, father getting a medal in Vietnam. Um, they... 26 of May, 1966, Headquarters, United States Military Assistance Command, Vietnam. It says, um, award Army Commendation Medal with V device. Date action 9th of January 1966, Theater Republic of Vietnam. Reason for heroism in connection with military operations against the hostile force. Major Weinert distinguished himself by heroic action on 9 January 1966 while acting as an aid man on a medical evacuation mission. Although Major Weinert's primary duty did not require him to participate in this mission, he voluntarily accompanied Republic of Korea troops on a search and destroy mission. Major Weinert's complete disregard for his personal safety in the face of enemy fire during this mission, often standing knee deep in, mid, in, in mud and water, was inspirational to the members of the helicopter crew and to the Korean soldiers. Major Weinert was instrumental in loading 19 wounded soldiers aboard the medical evacu evacuation helicopters and their safe removal from the battle area. Major Weinert's heroic actions were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the military service. Uh, W.B. Rosan, Major General, USA Chief of Staff. So, um, 26th of May, 1966, I was a year and, um, uh, about a year and a month old, because I was born in April of 65. So, I guess I came real close to growing up without a dad if he had not made it. That's cool. I can't even imagine, uh, can imagine that kind of bravery. I'd be like, oh shit. I don't know. Wow. Here's someone doing a Batman uh, comic strip. Okay. 
we're talking about a new movie called Gladiator coming out. I printed it from the internet on March 23rd, 2000. Former Spice Girl Jerry lands film role May 16th, 2000. I don't need that. This must have been a pre-production pre art for Gladiator, I guess. That's pretty cool, I'll say that. take a brief break <clears throat> here but you can ow finger now I uh, you can uh, stick with me if you want I'm gonna keep going to the battery dies on this or the iPhone storage is uh, used up <clears throat> let me turn this music off a little bit I gotta go buy some trash bags or there's gonna be a catastrophe. taking the trash out and there's this big box on the uh, doorstep from Green Chef. They're meal kits. My wife ordered these meal kits. They're kind of expensive but then, then you cook them and they're really great. They give you all the ingredients to cook them but sometimes it takes a long time to cook them and then but we're low on money because we're still waiting on the IRS to send this money back. So uh we, uh, my wife canceled, she was hit a couple of them, subscriptions to these meal kits. So I gotta uh, open this box up because there's stuff that needs to be put in the refrigerator.
These are the recipes. Uh, these are what we, what's in the box: creamy chicken pot pie, buttery lemon garlic shrimp, and barbecue glazed meat loaves. I've never seen meat loaf plural before. So I'll put these back here for her. Oh, this little thing, wherever this is. Let's see what we got here. So they're in little bags. in there. And then there's a big ice pack. And then underneath that is some, uh, the, some of the meat that has to stay really cold. So let me get a bag. Is, uh, white shrimp, ground beef, and um, chicken breast strips. So I'll put this down in the bottom part. Saturday or Monday, and the, 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 guy, the owner's giving them permission to go in and videotape and take as many pictures as they want to, and they're going to get us those pictures so I'll really know what it looks like upstairs. Uh, he says that the doors to the different businesses that were upstairs still have the names of the businesses, like a barber shop and everything, and I think those would be cool to save. to be really good these, these masks she bought one for herself and one for me i took mine out of the package and put it on and it had the weirdest smell then i look and it's made in china it's like oh boy what is that you know during the height of the pandemic like uh back uh last summer early summer in the mail just unsolicited we got a package of like three or four masks it's like we didn't order them but they had our name on them, and they showed up. And we thought, my wife actually used a couple of them. And I thought, well, that's a little suspicious that someone just... How do, you, how do you just get stuff sent to you for no reason in the mail? And it's, oh, look, that's like a... The, the, it's like a Basil Gogos painting. The lighting, the different lighting. I got the, this lamp back here giving me that red glow. And then I got the blue glow coming from Johnny Hammond Smith on the TV. So let's uh, hit the button, which gives me another hour and four minutes of uh, recording time. And let's run up to what I affectionately call Kmart, but it hasn't been a Kmart since I was in high school or college. It's, uh, it's a Kroger, but I'm always gonna call it Kmart just because 
I'm a weird son of a bitch. And you know, Texas, the governor, Governor Abbott, uh, did away with the mask mandate, but, uh, but that's just as far as the, the state of Texas isn't going to punish you, you know, it's like the police aren't going to get you, but it's, it's up, left up to businesses, to private businesses, and they all still, pretty much all, with very few exceptions, uh, demand that you wear the mask, at least in the big cities, big, bigger cities. I understand that little towns, truck stops, whatever, nobody cares and nobody wears them, but um, here, you'll see when we get in, get to the Kroger, everyone's going to, I mean, you have to, they have a, a rule that you have to wear them. Uh, I'm going to use the restroom real quick, so uh, I'll, uh, to entertain the people while I go to the restroom. Would you do that, please? Because um, I'm not taking them to the restroom. Sorry, Drew was supposed to stay and entertain you, but she um, followed me. That was very rude of her. Oh, Xavier Cougat is what this is. So, um, we're going to take a ride around Gratuville. It's a day without trash bags. It's like a day without sunshine. We all love trash bags. and We're going to purchase some. We also need to get some cat food while we're uh, there. Because Kmart is your savings store. Where your dollar buys you more. I remember they used to have me go action figures and that's where I bought my copy of Superman the movie soundtrack in 1978 which I like to tell my wife every time we go there of course that was the year she was born she was born in 1978 there's a 13 year difference between us so let's uh, get in the Gratumobile which we purchased for $4,000 from a nice man that had taken had put a brand, almost brand new engine into it but uh, this is that little mask it's, it also looks like a pair of panties and I don't like wearing it because it looks perverted where is my uh, oh so I'll just wear this this little mask it looks a little less uh, the other one I, I wish I wish this show is in smell of vision so you really could tell I could convey to you what it uh, Smells like horrid. Just oh, Off to get trash bags. I'll 
I need to mow the lawn for the first time this year. It's looking like. houses on this side of the street were built in the 50s and all the houses on this to the right were built in 1964 um, before this was all a big pecan orchard on the right side and of course my wife is allergic to pecans pecan tree pollen so not a good place to live a house built in a former pecan orchard. You can still see all the old, old pecan trees all lined up in everybody's yards. This house coming up on the right is a really cool mid-century looking house. Look at that. It's built in the 60s. Inside it's real Brady Bunch looking with the, the stairs just like the Brady Bunch house. See that mechanic shop there, that old 1950s gas station there? This is oil change mechanic. That guy is the, the owner of that is the guy that sold me the car I'm in. If I hadn't, uh, my uh, mother-in-law lent us the $4,000 to buy it because I had no car to get to work a couple years ago. And then last year we got hit by hail that damaged the car and they the insurance just said, well, it's this is really totals the car. So they gave me a check for four or maybe five thousand dollars, and then we just paid my wife's mom back, and then we weren't debt to her anymore, and that was a great thing. I just have some dents in my car, and I guess my title is now technically a salvage title. But you know, this is just the car temporary, and it's it has had no problems. Uh, knock on wood. There's the old Kmart. They put a fake front on it and turned it into a Kroger. Art is the saving store. Well, let's see what we can uh, find in Kroger. Do you guys put your mask on immediately when you leave the car? Because it seems like that's what everybody does, but it seems like I always thought, well, you're just supposed to have it on in the store. But if everybody wears it in the parking lot, I find, you know, just you think, well, Texas relaxed the rules. But it, it, I don't see any difference except one time we went to a restaurant and the waiter wasn't wearing one and nobody in the, you know, it just depends. See, I, I got my mask and then I put it on, I pretty much put it on pre, I used to just put it on when I went in the door of the store, but I don't want to terrify people into thinking I'm going to give them uh, something, so, you know, because you pass someone in the park. I, don't, I just don't like conflict with idiots. So, let's, let's see. So, it's interesting sociologically. Just uh, last time I took you into this Kroger was right after we almost froze to death. That was horrible. Yeah, people are wearing their masks. I better put the stupid thing on. Yeah. Oh, this wind is making it very difficult. Yeah, we had a lot of wind. time of your life it's going to be okay to go into a bank with a mask on so appreciate these uh, that's the only cool thing about the pandemic I guess.
thing about this store. One time about 10 years ago, I came in here. When I walked in the front door, real loud on the loudspeaker, they were playing the Munsters theme. That was really one of the coolest moments in my life. It turned out they were just, every so often they were playing TV show themes on the uh, Kroger radio or whatever. But it was just so perfectly timed. Right when I right when I went through the sliding doors, the music started. I thought that's gonna that should be my entrance music everywhere. Okay. We need to catch the for $7.99 or if you get 120 bags for $9.99 I think that's the way to go just bang my finger Me or did Hot Wheels cars used to be a lot cooler? I look like I'm a doctor going into surgery. Teaching Dr. Dracula. Coins before bills. System. Price. 
processing. If you have coupe system processing, swipe or insert card and follow instructions on pin pad. Remember to take your receipt. Thank you. Remove all purchased items. getting low and I sense I think they start getting upset and panicked. Where did I park? Oh I'm back over here. Why am I wearing the mask right now is the question. If I take it off, people will think I'm an asshole. Of course I am an asshole. shopping cart bag so I guess I'll leave the mask on because I don't want to horrify somebody. Someone without a mask on. They're going to kick me the same. I don't think people wear these for the right reasons. I think people wear them because they think it's going to keep them from catching it. Because otherwise not so many people will be wearing them. I think they don't realize that the purpose of it is supposed to be to keep other people from catching it from you. I'm a, I'm a good boy. I'm compliant. I uh, do what Big Brother says. I wear my mask, goddammit. It makes me so proud to be an American when I wear the mask. Oh my god. It's my patriotic duty. <laughs> Alright, well, I saved the lives of countless people by wearing that mask. That very proud of myself. Look at that. That is not a job I would like to have. Look at that guy. He has to go up on that crane to change light bulbs. Yikes. That's one thing about having a movie theater. I have to get up on a ladder to change the marquee and then the lights above the stage. I guess I'll be the one that has to get up on a ladder and change them. Unless one of you guys comes and, and helps with the theater. I can put one of you to work doing that because heights terrify me. I think I was uh, f fell off a cliff or something in a past life. So I have a fear of heights. You know, so one time I heard some new age person say, you know, have you ever these little body these little um, birthmarks you have on your body those are, are where you were uh, wounded in, in a past life. Like, the, you know, if you got one on your belly then maybe you were shot or 
stabbed with a sword in that spot in a past life and then the little spot remains on you. You ever heard anybody uh, say that? <laughs> you gotta listen to the right kind of uh, new age assholes to, oh, David Wilcox supposed to be coming on doing a live show again. Uh, he's disappeared for a couple of months. Oh, I love him. He's my favorite new age guy. Um, I can't wait, man. David Wilcox. You gotta look him up. David Wilcox. Watch some of his stuff on YouTube. You might be put off at first by how weird he looks, but if you're watching me, I, I look weird, so you probably can take it. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's just real interesting. You give him a chance. David Wilcock. He's been around for years. But, uh, yeah. Let's do, where's the music? <laughs> it's on the radio. 47 at KLIF.com. I'm Dave Williams on the KLIF was the. Uh, it was called KLIF uh, because it broadcast from Oak Cliff. It was the uh, the it was the one the station run by Gordon McClendon. Gordon McClendon owned a chain of drive-ins, and he said these movies are so sh so shitty. I could make my own movies. So he made the giant Gila monster and uh, the the killer shrews. Those were made by Gordon McClendon for his drive-in chain. He also owned movie. Uh, um, he also owned uh, um, a radio station called KLIF. Big Cliff, and uh, they're the station. Uh, you know, when you think of classic top 40 radio from the 60s, they invented it with the jingles, with the singers, and the, you know, they still do on some of these stations. You know, where it's like KLIF 1190. You know, and then, and then the DJs, the way they sound and everything. Everyone copied KLIF in Dallas. People got tapes, recordings of it, and then pretty soon all over the country, people were hiring the same singers out of uh, the Pam's studio in Dallas, which is still there, to record jingles for them. Even over in England, and pirate radio stations off of the coast of England that broadcast from ships into England and played, you know, American rock and roll and stuff, and, and instead of the really uh, kind of repressed BBC. Um, they, they all sounded like KLIF was so influential. But now, of course, it's, uh, since it's an AM station, no one plays music on AM anymore, very rarely. So it's a, uh, it's a talk radio station, a very conservative, right-leaning. And it's no longer on 1190, it's now on 570. And there's a... Uh, it may shock you, but I listen to conservative talk radio. Isn't that a shocking that you would think that I listened to that? Because Grot to Orlov probably comes across as such a, a bleeding heart liberal to you on your. Uh, yeah. All right, well, we're back in, um, back home. Now it says Walgreens, my medicine is ready for pickup. Oh, I'll tell you what, I got to go back to Walgreens to get my medicine. Uh, but let me go in the house first, unload the groceries, and uh, make sure I... Uh, maybe I can go by the Cosmic Comics along with you guys uh, during this uh, this episode. They might have a magazine there for me that they pull for me called Retro Maniac or something. I don't remember what it's called. They're supposed to call me when they get it, but I get it, go into comic stores so rarely because I don't have any money. Okay, so where is the... There it is. Let me bring this stuff in. Okay. Dog's been peeing a lot more now that she's on these steroids, so I need more paper towels. sent me a text message that my ready my, my medicine ready for pickup it's blood pressure medicine because I'm so fat and uh, it's actually a hereditary thing in my family not being fat uh, my blood pressure Turning out to be a very busy day here in Bratuto. Let me go back 
can get the cat food. Okay. Okay, so I've got an hour and 24 minutes left on the DVD. And I know that YouTube will only go for about an hour and four minutes before it shuts off and says, Video paused, are you still watching? So I think what I'll do is hit the record button twice, and that'll make the recording stop in exactly one hour. And then it will, the recording will stop before the music stops. And then I'll probably have a song, you know, cut off in the middle. But I'll just cut to an emergency broadcasting signal and make it sound like it was intentional. And then I'll start that song at the beginning over on the next disc. So what I'll do is I hit, I hit this. Okay, so in one hour this will shut off. Because if I go to Cosmic Comics, I definitely not, it's going to take me more than an hour to get home. So let's uh, let's go on, take off. And then when I get back, I've got to put uh, some drops in my dog's ears for her little infections. And then we take her back to the vet on Monday. And she looks like she's clearing up and everything's going well for her, so that's cool. Yeah, Walgreens is a drugstore. I guess that chain is all over the country. I don't know. I need to mow the lawn. It's getting a little, a little shaggy. <laughs> All right. Packing all things the American left. Rush Limbaugh died, but it's creepy. They keep playing reruns. I don't think they know what to do because he had this top-rated station show and. With his death, who are they going to get to fill in? Who are they? So they play these uh, best of repeats, and it's like it's like a, it's creepy that they do that. But it's not going to be really topical up to the minute. So I'll switch to this other station and see what they're saying. This house is cool. It has a basement here. Oh, look at that old car there. Rust bucket, but it's cool. Well, it's like you're spending a day with Gratu Orloff. But I don't always have this much fun. This is kind of a real event, uh, eventful day. My wife will wake up at some point and call and ask where I'm at. But 
I should have slept longer, but you know, the cats are hungry and the dog needs to eat. And, um, I stayed up way too late watching movies last night. But my wife's got this vampire sleeping schedule now that she's trying to break out of where she actually sleeps at night and is awake during the day because I'm kind of on the opposite schedule and it's uh, she wonders why I'm falling asleep while we're watching movies. It's like, you always fall asleep and well, no, it's uh, partly Yeah, it's a beautiful spring day. Not very sunny though. I wonder if it's going to rain. Well, 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 well. I See what he was saying. You guys have to subscribe to Graphic Man's radio, uh, <laughs> to his uh, YouTube channel. It's really amazingly polished, uh, well done, professional comic book stuff. I mean, it's great. You got to subscribe to Graphic Man. It's great. Um, just type in graphic man and then uh, maybe type in the word comic books uh, on the YouTube search engine. He sent me a, an AOK -okay package, you know, an act of kindness package a few uh, uh, weeks ago. And, and you can go back in my videos and watch it. And he sent me the coolest stuff. And he made this uh, little miniature movie poster. Um, where uh, uh, my head is superimposed over Frankenstein's head in a, a wonderful universal movie poster. Um, he's just the nicest guy and he's really cool. And he has a really great home tour that he put up um, somewhat recently. Oh yeah, um, Spinner Rack Studios had a commercial for a home tour that's upcoming and oh, have I missed it? I need to go check his page because um, I don't know if it's been put up yet. Um, there's the big Walmart supermarket. It's so much fun. Oh my gosh, I can't get stand it. It's such a beautiful town, oh my gosh. Oh, we ought to go look at the um, this cool plant store right, while we're out. Oh, look at this idiot in a little clown car. You see that? <laughs> I wouldn't get on the highway in that. <laughs> Are you freaking kid? Every time I see some liberal driving that little smart car around, I, I just can't even believe it. The, the, the world the way it exists today. You know the weird thing about 1950s houses is the cars were made like boats back then and the garages are always these you know, a lot of times these one one car garage and I don't know how they fit those Cadillacs and those big Buicks and things in those garages and shut the door. Um, it's weird. Seems like houses built in the 50s would have huge garages well, we're here at Walgreens. It's just a great place. <laughs> Every time I I, 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 <laughs> I I pulled in there one time, like see what this red car is. There was a, I pulled in just like I'm doing now and there was a Coke on the ground. Oh, this is curbside pickup. I can't park here. Shit. 
I thought it was a problem. Anyway, I, I pulled in there a few years ago. And there was a, just a, someone had put a McDonald's Coke, you know, down there in a little cup. And I, I uh, accidentally rolled right over the Coke, right? And it, <laughs> it exploded when my tire went over it. And where that red car was was a white car. <laughs> a white car. Yeah. <laughs> was a white car and the people were in the car <laughs> and the window was down <laughs> so this coke exploded all, <laughs> all over their car and <laughs> and they <laughs> I was laughing so hard and my wife was not laughing and we had this couple that was staying with us in the back seat and uh, she was like this goth looking uh burlesque star you know those those types and he was kind of this uh kind of he, kind of a punk he looked exactly like a young dick van dyke but but like a punk rock dick van dyke and they were laughing back there and the, these people probably were looked over at our car and just saw these scary people laughing and oh uh, it was uh I don't know why it was just so funny. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. I wouldn't do that in a million years to somebody, but it's just that it happened. And, uh, well, let's go on in Walgreens and see what. The cool thing about my insurance now that I'm retired, they, I just they just give me this medicine free. They don't pay for every cent of it, so that's cool. Um. Shit. What is my phone number? I never can remember my phone number. Um, is it possible?